Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I'd like to join with colleagues what appears to be across the House and to put not too fine a point on it, uh, to acknowledge uh, Cam and the work that he has done to put this bill um, here in the House. This the Summary Offences Possession of Handheld Lasers Amendment Bill. And as we begin to look at uh, Clause 1 and around the title, I think it is appropriate again to thank you, Cam, for the work that you did. I think it's an honour to come through this House and to be able to put your name to a piece of legislation. Um, that is there. As things change, just like Clause 1 has changed, uh, you have brought about changes through this bill, and others in the House have acknowledged uh, the work that's happened around this bill. It came in uh, with a variety of intentions, um, and through that process has been refined down. And the best and foremost example is uh, Clause 1, the title. As it notes, this Act is the Summary Offences Possession of High-Powered Laser Pointers, the Amendment Act of 20. 12. Um, what people at home may not note, it's a simple change, it may initially seem semantic, but what we have changed in Clause 1 is the word handheld lasers to be high powered lasers. Uh, and the member in the chair, the, uh, Dr Cam Calder, has noted this was not necessarily his preference, first and foremost. I think for most of us uh, in the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee working under the uh, tutelage and support of David Bennett, we all sort of just went for that uh, colloquial notion of a hand-held laser. Tutelage. Well, new newer members have to accept the tutelage of, um, of older, yeah. older members. Yeah. Some would also yeah. say wiser. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what we're trying to, what we're drawing out here, what we're drawing out here, Mr Chair, around Clause 1 is that we did start with the title. We started with the title with what is a colloquial understanding. As we all would accept it's a handheld laser, something that we would uh, point. I'm thinking my uh, colleague, the Honourable uh, Morris Williamson, would be right into the technology. Uh, no, he's not so sure. But the key was that we were working within that colloquial expression of a handheld laser, um, and we've moved now to a high-powered laser pointed. There is still some concern, and there has been, even though we've reported back to the House around this Clause 1, there is concern that we may have sort of missed some elements, but what we wanted to do by redefining uh, the title, uh, moving into this Clause 1, was to, to point towards, and no pun intended, the Customs Import Prohibition Order of 2013. And this Customs Import Prohibition around the high power laser pointers is the I suppose the mechanism, uh, Mr Chair, the conduit, uh, the basis of understanding of why we made this uh, titular change. It may help the House, it certainly has helped me to understand a little bit. Uh, titular change, yes, that's right, a good Latin derivative there, but we won't, we won't get into that and declensions and conjugations, even though it is to do with titles. Um, it's not Spanish. So what we're saying here, uh, Mr Chair, it's around the title moving from handheld to high-powered lasers. That is linking us into the Customs Import Prohibition Order of 2013. It starts first and foremost that the Director of Health, in his or her opinion, understands that this device uh, is commonly understood to be a laser pointer. Uh, it also refers, and there's an and here, that it is a battery-operated uh, object so it's also, well, you can immediately see why we're moving away from the hand-held uh, nature. We're trying to be a little bit broader uh, here uh, with the title of the bill, that it's a high-powered laser pointer. I mean, not for a moment am I suggesting that we're going to be taking a, uh, a modern theodolite and shining it at a plane in the way that the Honourable uh, Paula Bennett experienced down in Invercargill. But we are trying to say that there are lasers which could be of uh, detriment to uh, aviation, which are more than simply handheld. But returning to the customs import prohibition of which Clause 1 links to eventually, um, it's intended to be used by the hand. That is another element within the customs import order. It has a coherent, a coherent uh, beam. I think this is something that uh, the Minister, Paula Bennett, was uh, referring to and had asked for clarification from the Chair, and I would welcome that as well, actually. Um, but it has to be a coherent beam. I suppose it's the nature of a laser, uh, handheld or high power, that it has a coherent beam, whether it has a certain... Uh, uh, well, we know about the milliwatts, uh, uh, Dr Calder, um, but we'd also want to know, is there an element of distance that's required here, and where does the coherence begin to break up? It may be too much within the, the realm's physical, but who knows? And one milliwatt. Now, this is one of the critical uh, reasons, uh, Mr. G, one of the critical reasons we did make the change there in Clause 1 around the title to say it was a high-powered laser. By referring to the Customs Act, we were referring to this one milliwatt of 
power. And so this then puts in Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Mr. I move that the question be now put. I'd rather hear from Mike Saban. Thank you, sir. Uh,